All right, so based on a few of the comments in previous videos, um, some of you might be kind of new to disc golf and uh, requested that I provide maybe some explanations of some of the things that's going on, some of the terms that, that are used in disc golf and some of the rules, I guess. So take this for what it's worth because I'm a novice and um, I most likely will get some of this wrong. So if you know more about it than I do, um, you know, feel free to correct me in the comment section. Um, I'm going to do my best just to kind of give a general overview of uh, disc golf uh, terms and maybe a few of the rules as we go along. So here we are at Founders Park in Dallas, Texas. It's a little 11 hole course. There's nothing over 300 feet. None of the holes are over 300 feet. It's what is called a pitch and putt. Um, it's a relatively easy course. It's designed for beginners. Um, they call it pitch and putt because uh, most disc golf holes are par three, meaning it they deem it uh, it would take three throws to get it into the basket. Um, these are pitch and putts, and they're kind of even though they are mostly still par three, um, they're designed. If if you kind of know what you're doing, you should be able to get a birdie, which would be um, get it in the basket in two strokes. A little bit challenging for me though, but yeah, it, this is one of the least difficult courses I've played. Uh, it'd be a good chance to go through and uh, just go through some of the terms with you. Here's hole one. You see the ch uh, those baskets, they're called chain star baskets. Uh, that The ones here you see with the yellow band on the top, that's regulation size, and that's throughout this entire course here. So if you actually, they're the same exact ones you would see in a pro disc golf tournament. Um, this one is 189 feet away. Um, it's a little bit to the right of the tee box. The tee box is what I'm standing on right now. Uh, con they're con sometimes concrete, sometimes dirt, sometimes turf. They could be really anything, but, um, you have to stay on that tee box for your first throw. And let's take a look. Uh, I am throwing, it looks like a T-Bird 3. Now, with the flight numbers, T-Bird 3, uh, you see the numbers on the screen right now. Um, I'm choosing this because I'm throwing a forehand shot. Forehand is, you, exception. there's a few, a lot of exceptions to the rule, but basically there's two ways to throw a disc, backhand and forehand. Right here you're seeing, I'm setting up for a forehand shot. Uh, it is not as common as backhand. It, on average... For most people, it tends not to go as far as a backhand throw, but uh, the advantage of it is that if you're right-handed, the disc will fade to the right, which is what I want for this shot. I want it to fade right and go, get as close to that basket as possible. A backhand throw for a right-handed player will fade left. Fade is the way the disc turn, um, moves at the end of its flight. Fade is at the end. Turn is in the... Is, during the flight so if you hear me say turn this this turns to the right that means in the middle of its flight um we'll get into some more of that later this one is what they call a beefy disc uh, for me it's a beefy disc which means the it's got a lot of fade which means it's going to fight you know in a forehand throw it's going to fight to get to the right as quickly as possible and it really didn't and the reason it didn't fade to the right as much as I thought it was going to is because I put too much of an Anheuser on it. And you'll look at your screen here. There's Heiser and Anheuser. And the way I remember it is um, if your hand is higher than the other side of the disc, it's a Heiser. If your hand is higher, it's a Heiser. That applies for forehand and backhand. If your hand is lower, it's anti-higher. So it's an an anti-Heiser, Anheiser. Uh, that's kind of just how I remember it. But um, I think for this shot, I put too much Anheuser on it. Um, and it took too long to have to stabilize itself back out. Uh, if I had thrown it harder and farther, it would have eventually faded to the right. But it didn't get the chance because it only went maybe 160 feet. Uh, you saw it there. Maybe try to fight back to the right right before it landed, but it wasn't enough. 
All right. So at this distance, what what I threw uh, th that T bird three, that was a um, a fairway driver. There's four kinds of discs: putters, mid ranges, fairway drivers, and distance drivers. And they're all based. I'll throw a I'll throw that T bird three back up. The numbers back on the screen. Um, if you see the first number. Uh, that's the speed of the disc and, and people get this confused all the time the speed of the disc is not how fast it goes it's how fast you have to throw it to get it to do what it was designed to do so a lot of people will grab a 14 speed thinking that's going to go the farthest well no you're not going to be able to throw it fast enough so what it's going to end up doing doing is fading quickly if you're a right-handed player throwing backhand it's just going to dump off and fade to the left quickly and you would actually get more distance if you threw something that your arm speed was more compatible with, I'd say maybe a six speed or even a nine speed. <clears throat> um, so I chose an eight. Um, the, the rule of thumb is we'll, we'll go out into a field and throw a disc as far as you can, whatever your max distance is with any disc. Mine is 316 feet, which is really horrible. I mean, pros can throw it 600 plus. Um, so 316 feet, the, the formula is um, the farthest distance you can throw divided by 32. So for me, that's, you know, I should be really throwing 10 speeds or, le or less. Anything 11 or more, um, I tend not to throw unless I'm forehanding because I'll put an extra, I'll put a lot of Anheuser on the disc. And if it's got that extra, if it's got that extra uh, fight to get back, that extra fade, uh, and if it's a, a faster disc than what I can throw, it will fight to fade quicker, quicker. And just me naturally, I throw with a lot of Anheuser when I'm forehanding. So anyway, right here, I'm using a, a putter because I'm fairly close to the basket. I'm horrible at putting. And from this distance, my percentage of getting it in the basket is very low. But uh, this is a two speed. Oh, so for the speeds, one, two, and three speeds are um, generally putters. Four, five, and six are mid-ranges. Uh, seven, eight, nine are generally fairway drivers. Ten and above are usually distance drivers. And in a, in a tournament or if, you know, you're playing with friends and it's not casual, like they want to play by actual tournament rules, um, you would use a marker. You'll see a marker later on in the video, but... A marker is just a very tiny version of a regular disc, and you would put that in front of the, the disc that was on the ground, and then you would remove the disc that you, you had previously thrown, and you have to stand behind that. All right, hole two, big downhill. Oh, this is where I meet uh, I meet a new friend. Uh, her name is Mariana, Mariana, and she's showing me her discs here. I really like that Valkyrie, even though it's in, okay, there's different kinds of plastics in disc golf. The one she's got here, this Valkyrie, uh, we were talking about it being in a base plastic. She, just, she doesn't, she loves the disc, but she's wondering if they make a Valkyrie in a better plastic. That's the base plastic. I think in Innova, the base plastic, the base plastic is called DX, but every manufacturer has different names for their plastics. Innova, their base plastic is DX, and then it, Star and Champion are some of their more premium plastics. And the difference is um, base plastic gets worn out real easily, um, and it gets beat in. There's two, two terms. They mean the same thing, beat in or seasoned. <clears throat> when a disc gets beat in or seasoned, when it hits a lot of trees, hits the ground a lot, every time it kind of folds in on itself every time you throw it into a tree it kind of folds in on itself base plastic does it more so than the premium plastics when when a disc folds in on it kind of folds in on itself too much over time it gets less and less stable oh stability we need to talk about um, a really understable disc will turn a lot in flight remember i said turn is if we're a back if you're throwing backhand you're right-handed turn is how much it will go to the right during the flight so a really beat in disc or a really understable disc will turn really far to the right before it may or may not even fade back to the left depending on what that fourth number is the fade so let's say you have a uh, i'll just show a random <clears throat> set of numbers of a disc on the screen 
Um, this one's got a lot of turn and a little bit of fade. So this one tends to, go, you know, it will go pretty, uh, pretty good distance to the right. It kind of makes an S. Ideally, it makes an S kind of uh, pattern in this in the air. It'll turn to the right. That's the turn before it fades back to the left. And that increases, that maximizes the amount of distance. Um, some discs, though, you don't want to make that big S. Some, you just want a laser beam straight at the target like you're in a lot of thick trees. And so you'd want one with um, less turn and maybe less fade. The one I'm, I'm thinking of, a Mako, uh, Makos are like zero turn and zero fade. They're kind of just laser beams. Uh, buzzes, uh, Emac Truth to some extent. Some of them, yeah. So it dep every disc... Uh, there's a disc for every kind of shot shape, every kind of line that you need to throw. All right, Mariana. She's about to show me how to properly run this uh, hole here. If I remember right, she does quite a bit better than me. Look at that. She throws it just beautiful, just within, you know, ten, in, well inside the circle. We would call that a bullseye. She's well inside the circle. Oh, the circle is, uh, there's two circles. Um, if, where the basket is, if you draw a line out um, 32.8 feet or 10 meters, whichever you prefer, uh, and then draw a circle around that. So that's circle one, any, anything in there. And then another 10 meters above that, a much a bigger circle, that's circle two. So she's definitely within circle one. If you're close enough inside circle one to where it's pretty much an easy tap in or just an easy throw in, uh, that's what they call a bullseye. Some really good throws. And I've got a buzz. I'm thinking it's, you know, it's got a fade of three. I'm going to, I was going to try to hang it out to the right and let it fade in. But I didn't put it out to the right enough. And I think it's going to end up way too far left. Let's see. Now, again, this is a, yeah, see, I didn't get it. I wanted to throw it out there. That that tree to the right of me kind of got in my head a little bit. I should have hung it out farther to the right and let it fade in. Um, and I didn't really, I didn't put enough spin on it. Spin equals distance. You got there's, there's all manner of techniques. I, I can't even get into all the throwing technique yet. The whipping and the power pocket and the spin and the wrist technique and the, where your elbows should be and body rotation and getting your hips oh, there's a whole science to throw in it but um so this is a relay i think i'm just going to make a, a straight shot right for it this time it's downhill too so this was quite a bit better still not great Ooh, and it skidded outside the circle probably that's a that's going to be a a almost impossible shot for me a tester putt for an average player, the tester putt is one that your your probability is 50-50 or, or less. Now I'm just going to try a putter, which I should have done from the beginning. I mean, this entire course is a putter course, really. And, of course, that's what I should have done all along. Yeah. I think Mariana's throwing a mid-range there. That one gets a little away from her. That was a. Uh, that might have been the case if if it shanks off way to the right like that for a right-hander. <clears throat> it's uh, it's it's likely the cause of that is what's called grip lock. When you're supposed to have a firm enough grip on the disc to where uh, like a firm handshake, no more, no less. <clears throat> if um, if you're if you're gripping it too tight. Or if you don't release um, at the right time, gri grip lock is when you kind of your fingers get in the way or your grip's too tight. By the time the disc releases, it's past the point of when it should have released, so it'll shank off to the right. Happens quite a bit. And then the flip side of that is early release. If your grip isn't tight enough, it'll slip, it'll slip out of your hand before the release point, and then it'll go off to the left. All right, so that tree's kind of a little bit in the way. So I'm going to have to kind of, what's called, a, no, I guess I'm okay. I was going to say this is a straddle putt, but um, that's just a normal putt. Miss it, of course. It hits the cage. Um, yeah. 
they always say um, if you're if if you're competing, um, driving, you know, a, a drive is trying to get maximum amount of distance. Usually, it's your first or second throw. Um, they say dr drives are for show. Like everyone, uh, many disc, most disc golfers are so concerned with uh, getting eat, you know, chewing off as much fairway as they can on the first throw, and so that's their main focus. Um, and it's just flashy. It, it's cool, you know. It's sexy to get a four hundred foot, you know, drive, uh, but is not. That's not as important as good putting skills. So the old saying is, you drive for show, but you putt for dough. And so I just don't. It's, I need to spend more time putting. Hole three. I'm using a river. It's kind of a straight. It's a little bit of fade to the left, not much. It should flip up. And but when I mean what I mean by flip up is uh, if I throw it with on a hyzer, we remember what a hyzer is. If you throw it hard enough, it's a seven speed. If I'm hoping to throw it high, hard enough to where uh, that that turn of whatever it was, negative one, if, if you throw it hard enough, it should flip up to flat, fly straight, and then just a slight fade at the end. So I'm kind of aiming just a little bit to the right of the basket and hoping it just kind of gently fades in, which I think it did right there. Yeah, that's not a tap in, but that's just an easy putt right there. All right, first birdie, I think that was. Hole four. Um, I'm using a road runner. I think that's a nine speed. It's got quite a bit of turn on it. I'm kind of afraid of the traffic on the left. I don't want to hit a car. So I want that turn. Remember, it's that means it's going to go to the right in mid-flight to just kind of make sure I stay away from that road. But, you know, that doesn't always happen, which I think this is the case. Yes. I get it too high, and it almost goes out in the road. It's right there at the railing, and it didn't even, not near enough distance either. So we see there now, if this were a tournament, uh, that would not be out of bounds. OB, they call it, out of bounds, um, because at least some of the disc is in bounds. Uh, in this case, you... Uh, uh, generally would get the option to take it laterally so you from looking at the it'd be side to side as you're looking at the basket you could take it in, back in bounds laterally up to one meter so you're going to see me here in a minute uh pick up the disc and i'm going to put basically put it a meter back into play which i believe it to tell me in the comments if i I've never been in a tournament. I just think I, I think that's correct. Yeah. So if that didn't look right, let me know. That's how I see the rules. Um, yeah. So from this distance, a lot of people would try a jump putt. I'm not that cool. So I just try to get as close to the basket as possible. And there's the Dallas skyline. That's how close we are to downtown. That Reunion Tower is a, a, a restaurant. I've been told that Wolfgang Puck is the head chef there. Um, I was, I ate there once when I was a kid, long, long time ago. And I remember all I remember about it is that my dad complained about the tuna fish sandwich being fifteen dollars. <laughs> this is kind of a tester putt for me. I do not get it from this distance 100% of the time. Got the apartment complex on the left. That fence is high enough to where I'm not terribly concerned that I'm gonna go over the fence. It'd have to be a really high one. And we got some low trees. They call it a low canopy or low ceiling. It forces you to throw low. And that looks like yeah that's the way just like a nice i think that was the relay had a little bit of turn on it but for the most part it was just a uh it was a bullet straight at the target now i'm putting with novas now i used to putt with the uh the, the mvp ions i'm still not married to the novas if anyone has a 
other ideas tell, tell me in the comment section what you put with something with um maybe something understable an understable putter might be uh, i think that's what i need because i tend to put with too much hyzer this is a roadrunner <clears throat> really understable i want it to do an s curve i want it to go right before it goes left and a lot of this you know, look at these gaps. They're impossible, you know, unless you're a pro to hit these gaps. So a lot of this is luck, just crossing your fingers and and it skips. Eh, it doesn't go left enough, though. Sometimes you get a, uh, a, a flare skip, especially with forehands. When it hits the ground, especially hard packed dirt like this, you get what's called a flare skip. You can get another quite a bit of distance even after it's hit the ground. It'll flare skip in the direction you want to go. So now I'm throwing, a, I think this is the T-Bird 3. I want to try to get some more fade with it this time. And that faded more like what I was trying for. Got a little tree love there. You see that first tree kind of kissed it and uh, put it onto a better. Yeah, if the tree helps you, if you hit a tree and it helps you out, they usually call it tree love. Or you got a good tree kick. But sometimes there can be some tree hate as well. Now you see here uh, that tree's in my way if I'm just a regular like uh, you know in my regular stance for putting. So this is a straddle putt. You can as long as one foot's behind that disc, you can straddle out right or left to try to give you some more lateral distance to j avoid obstacles and and putt. All right, let's see. <clears throat> that basket is over there on the left, and it's quite a bit downhill. It's a nice kind of steep downhill. So you have to factor that in, let gravity kind of help you. If you're throwing downhill, the general rule of thumb is, let's say this is 200 feet, whatever it is, I don't know. But um, if, if this were 200 feet and this much downhill, it would play like 150 feet or 160 feet. Hang it out wide and kind of skip it. It kind of get, I think, I think it got hung up there on a tree root, maybe some brush. That was the Buzz OS, the Buzz OS. It's a fade of three. I was hoping to just kind of fade it in. And this is the Rock 3, basically the same numbers as the Buzz OS. So I'm going to try the same thing, just get throw it flat and get a fade going on it. And that fades in quite a bit better. Boom. Looks like it rolled right up to the pin. Now you see here, I'm using an actual marker. So that's what you would do for a tournament. You'd place that marker in front of the disc that you just threw, move that old disc out of the way. And then I guess that's because when you f just flip the disc over that you just used, there's a, more of a chance of uh, not being as precise. Like you could flip it forward and, you know, actually get a couple of extra inches. You know, putting that marker there just decreases the opportunity for someone to cheat or be a little uh, unscrupulous. All right. That, would, that wouldn't be a birdie because that was my second throw. But this is a practice game, so we'll call that a birdie. All right. This whole lot of trees. There's really... And it's kind of uphill. You see all those roots and it, the quick, steep slope right up to the basket. And so what I did there was I threw with an Anheuser. Um, Anheuser, this was, I'm, I can't really throw Anheuser. I'm not that good at it. This is the first and only time, I think, on this round that I actually tried to throw Anheuser. Um, what I was hoping to do is get a more stable disc to... Um, fly to a turn to fly to the right this is what's called a flex shot flex shot is throwing an overstable disc with an anheuser basically it achieves the exact same thing as throwing an understable disc um but an, it it's the exact same pattern but if you throw an understable disc and it hyzer flips up and turns over to the right and then fades back, that's called an S sh an S turn or an S shot. Um, if you throw an overstable disc with an anhyzer, it's the exact same 
Uh, it looks the same in the air, but it's called a flex shot. And so the same goal is achieved with two different types of discs. Now, what we're looking at here is what's called a death putt. If you go for it and miss, you're going to go way down that hill. And I think I do on this first try here. I just to show you that I'm going for it. I actually tried for the basket, but I miss. And I pay the price because I've got a heavy-duty comebacker shot. All right, so it's and then it rolls right down the hill. And that comebacker shot, I, prob I probably wouldn't get that either. So I would lose at least a stroke, probably maybe two strokes. The smart thing for me to do, if I'm not 100% sure I can, I can uh, drain this putt from here, is to just, what we call it lay in up. You just kind of, if it's windy too, death putts or wind, just kind of lay it up there next to the pin. Don't even mess with it and take your par instead of messing with uh, bogey or worse. So uh, bogey is one more throw, one more stroke than is recommended. So in a par three, if you if you make it in four, four throws, that's a bogey. If you made it in five throws, that's a double bogey and triple bogey and so on. Um, if you do it in one less stroke than what the course calls for. So a par three, if you did it in, in two strokes, that's a birdie. Uh, one stroke would be an eagle. Also, it'd also be a hole in one because you did it from the tee box. Now in a par five, um, you get it in five, of course, that's par. You get it in four, that's a birdie. You get it in three, that's an eagle. If you were to get it in two, which I think I've seen maybe a couple times in my life, it's an albatross. And if you were to get uh, get it in one, which would also be a hole in one, uh, which I've never seen, I don't know if it's ever been done before, in uh, ball golf or disc golf, uh, a hole in one uh, on a par five would be called a condor. Most people don't know that, but I don't think one's ever been pulled off. I've gotten one eagle in my life, and I've never aced a hole. Acing a hole is a hole-in-one, no matter what the par is. All right, this hole, a um, lot of trees. I mean, there's an obvious gap to the right, and that's what I'm kind of looking at. I'm not good enough to thread the, thread the needle through any of these tighter gaps on the, in this, you know, straight or to the left. And I'm aware of that homeless guy sleeping over there off to the left. It's kind of getting in my head a little. I don't want to accidentally hit that homeless camp. So I'm just going to take the obvious, I think I'm taking the obvious uh, uh, line here and just trying to hang it out right with something overstable that will fade back left. And although this disc isn't technically overstable, if I put a little more hyzer on it and give it the chance to fade back. And I miss the gap still and I almost hit the homeless camp. So none of that worked out correctly. I think I was trying to throw to the right of that big tree. And I just didn't put any mustard on it whatsoever. Didn't even come close to the basket. An, a recreational or a, an, uh, a good solid amateur player could get up to that pin. Get it, they call it pin high. Is like um, <clears throat> getting left or right of the basket, but far enough to where it would have hit the basket. That's called pin high, and they would have gotten pin high pretty much every time so I'm just gonna try to this is an upshot if you hear someone saying oh you got up and down really well this is the upshot and then down would be into the basket so when someone says yeah I got up and down at least that means they got a good upshot and then they just chained out chained it they drained the basket so this is a pretty decent up and down for par All right, hole 10, nice elevation change. See it up there on the hill. Some trees to be aware of. Again, I'm going to have to hang it out really high. And my aim is dog poop let's try that again there we go there we go okay that's as good as i could ever hope for <laughs> hit 
hit the band. That happens quite a bit. Let's try that again. From this distance, it's a crapshoot. I should be hitting them every time. If you look at the Professional Disc Golf Association guidelines for, you know, where, where do you stand as a disc golfer? It'll show um, the lowest is novice. And I think from 20 feet away from the basket, you should be hitting four out of every 10 putts at 20 feet. And then it goes up from there. There's recreational. You should be hitting six out of 10 from 20 feet. A competitive amateur should be hitting maybe more than six. And then pros from 20 feet should be just draining them every time. So even though I've been playing since 1987, I'm still maybe high novice, low recreational, somewhere in that. I doubt I'll ever compete. Um, this is more just therapeutic for me. It really is great just being out, uh, walking around, getting some exercise. It helps with my PTSD from from the war. And uh, I don't really try to make it too, I'm, I'm not too hard on myself when I, when I mess up. That's a little birdie bag. It's got, uh, they usually have sawdust or chalk or talc, something in there to dry off your hands. Now I'm throwing a destroyer here. And I said earlier in the video that I don't throw anything, uh, anything with a speed higher than uh, 10 based on that equation that I told you earlier. But in this case, it's kind of a little cheat method. Um, I'm going to be throwing forehand, and I'm going to be throwing with a lot of Anheuser. Well, I, I hope to throw with a lot of Anheuser. So I need something with a faster speed that's and a lot of fade, that fourth number, um, to get it to come back to the... Uh, forehand tends to go to the right. I want something that when I throw it out there, it will fight really hard and go to the right quickly. So the goal originally was to throw somewhere between the road and that basket, throw off to the left there, and just let that really hard natural fade and the fact that it's a much faster disc than what I should be throwing to get it to fade back to the right and get to the basket. Too high and not far, not far enough left. So I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe that road, I think that road got in my head. I didn't want to hit a car. So I'm thinking, don't throw near the road. But in this case, you kind of have to throw kind of near the road. So this one, I just kind of shake that monkey off my back. And I think I throw it correctly this time. It's still too high, still really too high. And not uh, for a good forehand, it's all about the wrist flick and getting your elbow in the right position. Neither of those worked. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to let those, those cannot be the example that you're watching. So this T-Bird 3 is more in my, what I should have been throwing all along. Um, and I think this one's better. See, it has more flat and see how it went left before it went right. And that was a kind of a good flex. And that one got near the basket. That's the way I should have done it originally. Yeah, there we are. I always like an, a good putt to keep my confidence up. Good way to end the round. And so that's that. Um, that's just kind of the wave tops of the some of the terminology and the shot types and the disc types, disc selection. Um, we haven't even talked about throwing mechanics yet, but that's just kind of just a really, really general overview. And this is Mostly for those of you in the comments section that really you see these throwing and you're like, okay, uh, we have no idea what you're what you're doing here. Just to give a little overview, um, specifically, who is it? Two A H D Cat, A.K.A. Um, Hector the Cat, has been asking numerous times. So this is for you, Hector. Um, I hope to do it a little bit more in the future. I'm trying to get more down in the weeds with uh, some of the terminology and. Uh, mechanics of throwing and disc selection and whatnot. But I uh, hope you enjoyed and we will catch you next time. Take care.